So the Brooklyn Banks is the unofficial name for the area under the Manhattan side of the Brooklyn Bridge. So this place for decades has been extremely popular for not only skateboarders, but BMX and also rollerbladers as well. So it's even been cemented in history, featuring in a number of video games as well. And it was included in the iconic Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. So yeah, at any rate, it's a spot that is regarded as one of the most famous in the world. And it is actually easy to see why. So the Brooklyn Banks is a number of smooth banked surfaces. And all the banks are made of red bricks, which gives this spot a really iconic look that's really easily distinguishable. And on either sides of the bridge, these banks vary in size. So one side, between Park Row and Rose Street, there were small, more mellow banks that kind of backed onto more of a plaza setting. And on the other side, between Rose and Pearl Streets, there are larger banks that are accompanied by these huge pillars that act as the foundation to the Brooklyn Bridge. So not only are the big banks used, but the pillars also act as skate obstacles as well for many tricks. And over the years, ledges and a whole bunch of other things have kind of been added to the top of the banks, just giving it a really pure DIY feel. So the whole area, however, is much more than just banks. So there are multiple stairs, there's ledges, there's rails, and there is flats. And I mean, the natural environment really is a perfect setting for skateboarding. So apart from the larger banks, there are also a number of iconic sections that actually have been used by skateboarders over the past decades. And one of those more popular or more famous spots is on the side of the bridge where the smaller banks are located, there is a transition from the bank over to a ledge and it goes over the ledge onto one of the exit ramps of the bridge. There is a lot of famous footage of people doing this sort of transition from bank onto the exit ramp, but one of the more famous videos or things that have been captured is of Eric Coston doing a nolly backside heel over this in 1997. So this section also made the cover of Thrasher in February of 1993. And this is a shot of Jeff Pang and he's doing a backside shifty over it. Mike Vallali also ollies over this thing after they actually installed a metal picket fence around it. So to stop people from going from the bank over on the exit ramp. And this is probably one of the more crazier things that we've seen come out of the Brooklyn Banks, to be honest. And the day before that Mike V was trying to attempt this he almost impaled himself and then he actually came back the next day and just clears it and it clears it so confidently i mean the fence is so damn high it's insane that he actually manages to get over this thing and just does it so smoothly so there's also a nine stair that is divided by a rail and this one features in pretty much the majority of footage that's out there so this nine stair did make the cover of thrasher in october of 1995 and it's a 5-0 grind being done by chad musker so there's another really famous clip of jamie thomas and this has been called the kind of famous jamie thomas line and it starts with a grind down the nine stair and after he finishes that He kind of works his way down over the plaza doing some other tricks and he goes towards this larger 13 stair set that's actually on the side where the larger banks are located and he ends up doing a big 50-50 grind down this. Now, the skateboarding community has had to save the banks on multiple occasions and this has been mainly pushed by skateboarder and community organiser Steve Rodriguez. He is considered the mayor of New York City skateboarding with over three decades of skateboarding the city. And he is just one of the few skateboarders who are riding every day throughout New York City during the 80s and and 90s. So if we fast forward to 2005, and New York City actually agreed to keep the larger banks after the city remodeled over half of the skate spot. So the little banks were actually destroyed, which is really a shame. But it was during the same year that Steve Rodriguez started the annual Back to the Banks competition to raise money for the restoration for the area. The fight was kind of short-lived. So during 2010, New York City turned the space surrounding the larger banks into a storage facility for the Brooklyn Bridge restoration project. And it really sucks because the entire area was just, I mean, it has been closed off for well over a decade. And during 2014, a petition was created to reopen the banks, but that really didn't didn't help and, and they remain closed. So if we keep going until kind of the 2020, 
And with the banks still being shut, the city actually began removing some of the red bricks from the area. And this really started to set off a panic within the skateboarding community. And a lot of people went to social media with hashtag rip the Brooklyn banks. And it was during this time that another online petition was actually set up and it was called Save the Brooklyn Banks, what is called Save the Brooklyn Banks. And this initiative was created by college student Jonathan Becker. And with actually help from Steve Rodriguez, this petition has gained over 54,000 signatures. So with this petition, it started gaining a lot of traction, obviously, like with having 54,000 signatures, but the skateboarding project, which was originally the Tony Hawk Foundation, they actually jumped on board and have agreed to help with the planning and actual restoration for the area. So what's now being kicked off is something called Gotham Park, and that is an initiative by group called the Brooklyn Bridge Manhattan, and that's a New York State non-profit that was co-founded in 2001 by Steve Rodriguez and a couple of other people as well. So Gotham Park is the development of a new public space, will act as a central junction for the greater Manhattan suburbs. And in this plan, along with, as I mentioned, help from the Skate Park Project, The idea is for the smaller and larger banks to be rebuilt and reopened. So this skateboarding mecca will be completely revamped, which is fantastic. So during May of 2023, stage one was actually opened, which includes the nine stair with rail. So stage two of this project is set to commence during 2024, once the bridge work is finally completed. And rebuilding the smaller and larger banks along with the plaza are scheduled to take place during stage two. And if you are interested in more information or updates on this project, just have a look at the description and we have put the Gotham Park project there for anybody who is interested.